Have you guys heard about what's happening in Sweden, how they are just allowing elderly people to die from coronavirus? Because, well, we're not gonna do any sort of lockdown, who cares? Allow people just to live life like normal because, well, survival of the fittest. Of course you guys haven't heard about this because you guys are too busy obsessing over Donald Trump or some weird political obsession that you guys have. And when we talk about Sweden and coronavirus, you guys say things like, well, Sweden was the only country smart enough not to do any sort of uh, uh, lockdown in Europe and they're fine. They are an, an example as to why uh, lockdowns are not necessary. I listen to right-wing media all day and that's what I learned. Uh, those guys are smart. And your guys' narrative is basically let society go on as normal and if you die, well, obviously, you know, you really weren't uh, 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 strong enough and you were really too ill anyway to be a productive citizen of America. <sighs> so Sweden is pretty much doing euthanasia on the elderly, but through coronavirus. Let people live lives, uh, live their lives like normal. And well, we know the elderly are the most susceptible, so you know, kill them anyway. We were doing this euthanasia stuff for a while in Northern Europe, but coronavirus, you know, they're, it's, coronavirus is doing the job for us. So why do the work when you can get a microscopic creature to do it for you? So let's look at some articles here. These articles came out recently from um, Swedish media. And it really does demonstrate how much eugenics is, the, how much the ideology of eugenics and Darwinism is influencing the Swedish government. So it says here, less than 5% of Sweden's coronavirus patients in intensive care are over 80. So the majority of the people in Sweden that they are caring for are not elderly people. And isn't it interesting, last night I did a video on the head epidemiologist of Sweden, um, uh, Anders Tegnell. And the right wing, they've been praising Mr. Techno because, well, he's the scientist that's, that's defying Bill Gates and the elites because he, he, he didn't want to do a lockdown. And I played an interview uh, in which Mr. Techno was given some pretty hard questions, some pretty good, solid questions from an interviewer of BBC's Hard Talk. And Mr. You know, the, the, the interviewer says something like, hey, you know, thousands of people in Sweden are dead because of your policy. You know, don't you feel some guilt? And Tegnell's like, nah, nah, because it was only the elderly people that were dying, you know. It's only the elderly people. And, and you know, these uh, Swedish uh, people, or the, the people who would defend Tegnell, they would say something like, well, we need to uh, look after the elderly. Yeah, look after the elderly people, but the people who are young, they are strong enough to endure through it. But here is evidence that they're not even caring for the elderly. They're not even caring for the most susceptible people, the most vulnerable people to coronavirus. They're not taking care of them. They're taking care more of the younger people who are less vulnerable when it comes to coronavirus. What is happening here? They want the elderly to die. And it really, it really does goes along with what I've been saying for weeks now. You right-wingers don't give a damn about the elderly. You guys blame the left as for being uh, eugenists, for being you know people who want euthanasia, but hey, euthanasia through coronavirus, A-okay. We don't have to get our hands dirty. So it says here, people aged over 80 have made up 66% of those who have died from coronavirus in Sweden, but less than 5% of those treated in intensive care so less than 5% of those over 80 are the ones in intensive care in Sweden's hospitals. And yet they make up 66% of those who died so far from coronavirus. Now, if this techno guy, if this, if this techno guy's argument the whole time is, well, yeah, we're not doing a lockdown, but it's more of a danger for the elderly people, but we're going to help the elderly people. That is complete BS. It's a complete lie. They want to kill the elderly. They don't give a damn about the elderly. And there's something here in the bottom. It says here, according to, I can't pronounce this guy's name, Yingve Gustafsson, 
a professor in uh, geriatrics at Umeya University, it does appear that elderly people have been deprioritized. Quote, with available capacity at 20 to 30 percent in intensive care, they have definitely turned away some patients who would have had a chance of survival. But above all, basic hospital care hasn't been offered to the elderly in care homes. In Stockholm, only 12% of those who were infected in care homes have been admitted to hospital. There, they have received oxygen, nutritional drips, etc., etc. But look what it says here. Only 12% of those who were infected in care homes have been admitted to the hospitals. It's not about euthanasia. It's just about getting the economy strong, guys. That's what it's about. And here it is very obvious that it's about euthanasia. Here is an article, another article. This is from a Swedish uh, newspaper. And it says here, Yngve, Yngve, if you're Swedish, can you please tell me how to pronounce this guy's name? Yngve Gustafsson, professor of geriatrics at Umeå University, is deeply concerned about the care that sick elderly people receive at elderly homes during the corona pandemic. In some cases, palliative care, care at the end of life, is inserted without the relatives being notified or even the doctor having met the patient. So in other words, they see an old person, they're like, listen, we're going to kind of lead you to your death. Like, we're going to lead you in through the, uh, the end of your life. Sometimes you want to advise relatives to report to the police, etc., etc. This is extreme neglect, says Mr. Gustafsson. In SVT's agenda during Sunday evening, the debate became hot at times between Gustafsson and Thomas Linden, head of the National Board of Social Affairs. In several media, Gustafsson has likened the palliative care to active euthanasia, sometime, something that, of course, Linden says, you know, isn't true, etc. So this Gustafsson guy is saying, hey, this is euthanasia. You guys are deliberately allowing the elderly to die of coronavirus. Now, isn't it ironic that conservatives are sitting there pointing the finger to Billy Gates and they're saying, well, Bill Gates wants to do eugenics. And I'm not gonna deny that Bill Gates is a eugenist. He definitely has history with eugenics. He definitely has a history with Planned Parenthood. So I'm not gonna deny that. But you conservatives, they, you guys just wanna focus on Billy Gates all day and then you want us to praise Sweden for not doing a lockdown as though Sweden is fighting against the globalist elites. When the reality is that Sweden is a eugenist country. When the reality is that Sweden in the early 1920s had a eugenic policy of sterilization that it was forcefully imposing on its society, and the fact that it did not end its eugenic policy until 1971, and the fact that you have this psychopath, this legal serial killer, Anders Tegnell saying, yeah, but it was just the elderly people who were dying, it doesn't matter, when the fact is that they're only hospitalizing 5% of those who are over 80, the most vulnerable people. The fact that they are only hospitalizing 12% of the elderly people from from uh, elderly care centers. What the hell does this tell us? And what does this tell us about good old conservatives and right-wingers? Your inclination towards fascism, your <laughs> blindness to the realities of fascism and eugenics and Darwinism, the fact that you can worship a eugenic policy without even thinking about what you're actually following, tells me that you are the type of people who would seek Kyle. It really is that simple, guys. Think, oh, Sweden, a long history of eugenics. I knew this when I was in high school. I was studying about this stuff. Sweden, long history of eugenics, not caring about the elderly, allowing them to die. Oh, and you guys love the, the book Animal Farm by George Orwell. Animal Farm, Animal Farm. We're like animals in a farm. They want to treat us like animals. And you follow a scientist who says, we need the herd immunity, yeah. This is tan CT, by the way. It's very good to put you to sleep. But, you know, we're oh, animal farm, but you guys follow this, 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 these Nazis. Your inclination towards fascism is really showing. You guys are like the people who see Heil without even knowing 
that what you're following is going to lead to massive amounts of destruction in the world. Because this eugenic stuff, this Darwinism stuff, yeah, right now it's only contained within the scientific infrastructure and the medical infrastructure. But what happens when you have a whole army of paramilitaries who believe in this type of stuff? You think they're gonna be nice to you? I don't think you're gonna be nice to me. Because a lot of you guys, a lot of you righties, y'all are freaking lunatics. Not just lunatics, but you guys are absolute fanatics who are very susceptible to a virus that is actually a lot more dangerous than coronavirus. It's called the virus of populism, the virus of fascism, the, vi the virus of Darwinism, the virus of evolutionism, the virus of eugenics, the virus of hell, which has clearly possessed your souls. Anyway, hope you guys have enjoyed this message. Well, I don't think you guys enjoyed it, but I hope you guys at least have learned something and I hope I've at least gotten you guys to think about these things. Anyway, you guys just heard some theology. God bless.